I'm Brett McGregor, and since I won New Zealand's MasterChef, I've been doing a lot of travelling. Travel broadens the mind and the palate. I want to taste intense flavours, share inspiring recipes, and make new friends around the world. Most of us come to Fiji to do this, and why not? But for me, Fiji is way more than that. It's an ancient mix of two cultures, the Fijians who have been living on these islands for over 3,000 years, and the Indians who have been coming to these islands for 130 odd years or so. But where I find that blend most fascinating is in the food. Every main town in Fiji has a mix of Fijians and Indians. Their palates could not have started out more differently. But over the years, both cultures have influenced each other, and that's what I'm here to explore. So Shailesh, I've heard through the grapevine that you actually make the best curry on this oh. island. Uh, well, maybe second best. Second best to who? Yeah, my mum, and she can beat me any time. Executive chef at the outrigger Fiji Beach Resort, Chef Silesh Naidu's Indian curries are legendary around here. And as always, exceptional food starts with the right ingredients. So right. Shailesh, what are we looking for? Uh, we need spices, man. So yeah, the spices here. Yeah. Turmeric, this is good. good this turmeric. is the most very important one. This is masala mix. Chili powder, you want the hot one? Oh, I think right, we'll no, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll be all right with this one. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. We, go, we go easy with you, so <laughs> we need uh, cumin seed. Okay, and I see that's called, uh, is that jira? Jira, yeah, it's called jira. In Hindi, yeah? Yep. And this is mustard seed. Okay, so yeah, how much yeah, is yeah. it for those? Three dollars. Here's a fiver. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Back at the outrigger Fiji Beach Resort, the curry magic begins. Wait, can you just pound me some garlic? How many cloves? Uh, handful. A handful? Yeah. Love your work. Well, I slice the onions and then you can get going. Now, what do you think makes this curry different than a normal Indian curry? The secret to it is uh, it's done very slow pace. Yeah. Yeah, we go on beautiful island pace. Oh, I've noticed that <laughs> island pace already. No. Oh, I it's love just... it. So a bit of oil. Okay, beautiful. So probably about a tablespoon or so of oil has gone into the pot. Yeah. Okay, so cumin seeds, that's just a good pinch, maybe half a teaspoon. It's really hot in there as well. Yeah, it's popping. Mustard seeds. Now, the key to using mustard seeds is to ensure they pop, huh? Yeah. Smells good already. This is where you were saying before, long and slow. So get the saucepan nice and hot, yep. add your onions, turn the heat down, and you want to cook them until what? They're nice and soft or caramelised? How are we doing this? Correct, correct. Yeah? You don't have to caramelise the onion, don't you? Now I'll put... A few, three of okay, cardamom. Green cardamom pods. Yeah. Three cloves. And maybe half a stick of cinnamon. cinnamon. So you're really building a lot of flavor into those um, onions straight away. Yep. Okay, let's get the curry leaves in. Yeah, it just grows across the road. I know, I got those ones on the way up here. <laughs> I stole them out of the garden out the back. <laughs> yeah. Now these chilies. Bongo chilies. I think looking at that, it certainly doesn't look like it's going to be cold. I think it's going to have a fair bit of heat in it. So how many are we using? How many you can handle? Well, I'm not going to say <laughs> like you can. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, I'll make it a little easy for you. I'll de-seed it. You know, seeds, that's where the heat is. You know, and that little membrane that's on the yeah, inside man. there as well, eh? They're amazing. Just a couple of chilies. Just small slices of chili. Okay, maybe we can get our garlic in. Rightio. So I suppose you're putting that garlic in now because the onions are kind of halfway through. So you're really trying to develop that sweetness from the onions, aren't you? Correct. All right, Brad. Nice time for the chicken to go in. Chicken's on bone. Rightio. So that's yeah. where you're going to get maximum flavor yeah. into the and, curry. And maybe the other thing you'll notice, it's mostly Thai piece. Not too many breast piece here. Because Thai is more juicy and stuff. More flavor. Well, it's smelling sensational. What's next? We, it's time to get in our other spices in. Okay. So this is our is coriander. Call, yeah, masala is it's called. Oh. So oh, it is too. So garam masala. Yeah. One turmeric. Okay, a bit of earthiness and a great colour. 
Uh, oh, you can smell that more, straight away. A little bit, bit more. more. Yeah. I love the way you cook by eye. And I, now, you see the red stuff there? Yeah. The uh, grounded chilies. Okay. It's, it's more for giving a vibrant color to it. Oh, okay. Oh. So, do I believe you or do I just show <laughs> So, one. One. I live to eat people's curries. And I'm so stoked that you're teaching me this one. Salt. Maybe ginger. Okay. Get the ginger going. Can, if you can chop me some tomatoes. Sure. Couple. Would be great. Yep. Just chopped. Diced. Rightio. Okay. I'll add in the ginger. What's the idea of adding the ginger in right at the last minute? I don't like bending the ginger. Just allowing it to cook a little bit. Okay, so it keeps a little bit of that spicy yeah, yeah. edge as well. Yeah, okay. It's nicer to add tomatoes. And it, it reaches up here, it reaches the curry. Well, that's a new thing for me as well. I usually start with the tomatoes and the onions. But when you're doing bone in, because you know, tomatoes can tighten up the meat. And yeah, yeah, okay. Well, there's a really good tip. That's actually going to change my whole philosophy on making this style of curry. So I need some coriander. Now, this is a little different to it the is, usual it coriander. Is, it, is, it is sort of uh, coriander. I reckon it's a little bit more pungent it than is. normal coriander. Yeah. If we need any any more salt, or is it all right? Oh. What do you think? So much flavour. It doesn't need any more salt. I think it's just absolutely perfect. Just add rice and roti and a Fijian sunset. Let's get into it. Cheers. Looks and smells absolutely amazing. Hey, easy, man. You need to get your fingers into it. Oh, really? Cut is no good with knife and fork or spoon. All right, fair enough, too. You gonna follow me? Yeah, but you're right. Now you go for golf. <laughs> no. Yeah, good man. Well, thanks, mate, for spending so much time with me today. I've had a sensational time, but I've learned something that is new to my repertoire. That curry is absolutely banging. Thank you very much. Coming up, a Fijian lovo. That is beautiful, man. <laughs> I can't believe it. You could win a culinary escape to Hong Kong. Let Hello World and Cathay Pacific fly you and a friend to Hong Kong with return flights from Auckland, Wellington or Christchurch. Spend four nights at the luxurious four-star park hotel in a superior twin share room, plus learn how to cook traditional dim sum with a two-hour cooking class. Go to tvnz.co.nz slash taste of a traveller to enter. Good luck. I'm in the Nandronga region of Fiji. It's lush and fertile and known as the salad bowl of Fiji. What a great place for me to explore the food of the local Indian and Fijian cultures. I've been invited to a village for a Fijian feast called a lovo, but Apo has asked me to come early to help him with some preparations. Right, stand back. <laughs> it's such a long axe, hey, look at that. All right. Was no such thing as a free feed here, is there? <laughs> so what's next? The Fijian lovo has a lot of similarities to the Māori hangi, but already I'm seeing some differences too. You know, I thought this pit would be way deeper than it is. Yeah, but I would like it to be just uh, like that. Does it make the cooking any uh, any faster, or is it just easy to get the food out at yeah, the end? Yeah, easy to put it out. The idea is to build a fire to heat rocks for a ground oven. It's the traditional way of cooking, dating back thousands of years. You know, you could easily do this at home. It takes a few hours, but if you're having a special occasion, why not? You know, the fire's getting up there now. Soon the rocks go on, and we've got some banana leaves over there, which are easily found in some parts of New Zealand. It's a fantastic process. Whoa, it's getting wow. hot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> While the rocks heat up, time to prepare the meat. OK, bread will uh, marinate the chicken. Right so we'll start with the sauce. OK, some dark soy. Yeah. Although we're doing this the traditional way, I can see some Asian influences at play. Rightio, so now 
so you can feel it inside. What's in here? It's uh, ginger, garlic, and some little bit of uh, salt. Okay. Gonna put it in this. Into here? Yep. All, all the, the chicken. chicken. Yep. What, all, all of them? them? Yep. All of them. All right. Wow. Okay, let's get a look. Squash it right down? Yep. That's all right. Oh, I see what you're doing then, just like plat. Yeah. Okay. All together. All together, like nice. this? Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Right. So, what's next? We'll do the taro leaves. Okay. So, onions and uh, tomatoes. Yep. How many per person? You just drop two. Two of those? Yep. Yep. Some of these. That is just pure coconut, coconut milk, okay? Fresh yep. this morning. Yep. So, carefully wrap that up. Like this. So one of these per person? Yep. And these leaves are just all growing around here? Yep. All right, mate. Let's get them on the fire, eh? Okay. So we'll have to get the woods out. Oh, yeah? Just use the speed. So obviously, the flatter the surface, the better yep. the cook, huh? Yep. Now, I've seen this used in other parts of the world as well. They just slice it down, you know, into thin strips like this. You can even do it at home on the top of your barbecue. So oh, you've been a busy boy. Yep. <laughs> We're having a feast, huh? Yeah. What have you got in there? Uh, this is like uh, some pork okay. here, and sweet potatoes here, yeah. and uh, some dal. The pork will go first. Yeah. And this one next to it. Got some chicken here. Wow. And this one on this side. And well, it's looking fantastic. So do some these vegetables just go straight on the top of those? Yes, top of it. So beautiful, mate. And the next one on top of it. Okay, so on top of everything. Yeah. Okay, so what are we doing? Yeah, just place it like this. Just cover it from here. Can you smell it? Yeah, I can. <laughs> oh, that's good. It's amazing how hot that is, but how well that has retained all of the smoke and everything, eh? Yep. So how long is it going to take to cook? Uh, one, one and a half hours, maybe. Two. Okay, so what are we going to do now? Uh, yeah, I've got an idea. Alright, let's go. Oh, <laughs> you're on. <laughs> oh, it's a high one. If there's one thing that Fijians love as much as a lovo, it's rugby. It just runs through their veins. Given a flat piece of land and an hour or so oh to spare, God. it's game on. <laughs> this area of Fiji, Nandraga, feels 90% of the Fijian rugby and sevens teams over the past 10 years. What's their secret? Well, it's certainly not me. I reckon it's got something to do with the food around here. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. I'll let him score. <laughs> <laughs> Losing my glasses like this. <laughs> 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 At last, the lovo is ready. Whoa, it's really shrunk. Yep, it'll be hot, but yeah. certainly is, mate. Oh, the smell. You know what I can tell? There's a few people coming, so the smell must have got out and yeah. escaped with the locals. Sure, you need hands of steel for this, mate. So we're just going to line these with the leaves and then cover the food over to keep it nice and warm? Yep. That's a good little trick, mate. Man, you'd work well in a kitchen with hands like that. Wow, it's amazing how that's retained so much heat. Oh. I'm getting more and more excited the closer we're getting. I just kind of, I can't wait to see what it's like. It's definitely ready, mate. Those kumara are perfect. And I can see that the pork, it's all starting to come away from the bone. Oh, it's really smoky. You can tell that steam, it's obviously steamed up, but my mouth is absolutely watering. I'm gonna have a sneaky peek. Yeah. Oh. Smoky, juicy. Should we take it over there or should we just stay? Yeah, we should stay. <laughs> Come on, then. One. Oh. I'll go and get the other one, huh? Oh. This one here is just coconut milk. These ones have got everything in it. You should try one. Honestly, we've worked all day for this. <laughs> oh, what? Yeah, OK. And so you just eat everything? Yeah. 
Wow. I think you're going. That is beautiful, <laughs> man. I can't believe it. Oh, I might grab a gold one, eh? I reckon you can do that at home too, just in the oven, covered in a little casserole dish, you know, a little bit of tinfoil over the top. And after that, you can just try it. Oh, I will, mate. The leaf, it's a way different flavour than I thought it would be. Is everybody happy? Yes. yes. Is it good? Yep. The biggest part of a lava is this. It's a real event. No matter where you are in the world, food is what brings people together. How'd I do? Mate, see the smells in there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, I had a good teacher. <laughs> I'll never forget this, mate. Thank you so much. <laughs> Next, I'm on the hunt for a mystery ingredient. I'm looking for a Roro. What? Roro. You could win a trip to Sydney and the New South Wales South Coast. Fly to Sydney, pick up your rental car and enjoy a leisurely drive to Mollymook where you'll spend two fabulous nights at Bannisters by the Sea. Enjoy dinner for two at Rick Stein at Bannisters, then head back to Sydney's vibrant city centre. Enjoy two nights exploring the new dining precincts including Sydney's inner city suburb of Paddington to enjoy dinner for two at St Peter. Go to tvnz.co.nz slash taste of a traveller to enter. Good luck. So there's this local restaurant in Nandy called Two's Place. I'm heard that if you want to experience quality Fijian food, then that's the place to go. So anyway, I called up Two, and he's agreed to show me a dish that everybody around here raves about, Roro balls. Thing is, I've got to bring some Roro with me, whatever that is. Paula. Paula, do you sell any um, Roro? No Roro? Hey, man, I'm looking for some uh, Roro. I'm looking for Roro. What? Uh, Roro. Oh, Roro is sell at the corner. It comes from the taro. And it's the leaf of the taro. It's selling uh, in the back. OK, yeah. thank you. Um, do you have any uh, Roro leaves? Yeah, over there. This Bula, how are you? Ah, can I get a couple of uh, ro stacks of Roro leaves? How much are they? $4 in total. $4? Here's five bucks, mate. Keep the change. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Time for a Roro Balls cooking lesson with Chef Tu, an absolute master of Fijian cuisine. Tu, so there's your Roro leaves. Thank you. How did I do? Did well. Nice and fresh. Good. Well, I didn't actually realise that it was a taro leaf, so <laughs> you got me there. I was wandering around the market. So what do we have to do first? You cut from the bottom of the stalk. And okay. this is how you tear it and just put it into your bowl. So no stalks? No stalks. So what is a Roro ball? A Roro ball is actually, um, it's like a meat ball. Oh, really? Yeah. With no meat? With no meat. Well, to be honest, I have never made one before, so I'm very excited to learn your recipe. Who knows, one day it may even grace the table at one of my restaurants. Very good. <laughs> so that goes straight into some boiling water? Exactly. Right here. After an hour, the Roro leaves are mashed, then strained to remove as much liquid as possible. Now we've got our mashed taro leaves. Put about three tablespoon measures. OK. Could you use spinach in a situation like this if you're making it at home and couldn't get any taro or Roro leaves? Uh, the texture would be a little different. OK. You've got to remember that. With the spinach, you might have to blend it. OK. To get no worries. consistency. Well, that's okay. a good tip. OK. And the next step will be adding the herbs. So what's that, that a little bit of spring onion? Spring onion. How much? Uh, about a handful will do. Right, yeah. Coriander. It's coriander, mm -hmm. coriander so a good pinch of coriander. Yeah. I love the stuff, so. Yeah. Nice and refreshing. It certainly is. A teaspoon of garlic. OK. A pinch of salt and pepper. And a pinch of pepper. And always black pepper, never white pepper? Black pepper, yeah. Basil. OK. Yeah. Now, just whole leaves yeah. or just torn? Just torn. So just like so. They smell beautiful. Yeah. So what we need to do is after you've done that, you mix it properly. So um, rolled balls or just basic? Rolled balls, yeah. And you just roll it in the flour, which is that one there. OK. There is a lot of goodness in that ball. Definitely. All right, now we get a frying pan. Put a little bit of oil in. So you've got that on a medium-low heat, I think. Yeah. 
The reason for that is don't make sure you don't burn the uh, roto boards at the same time. So okay. Yeah. And so how long do you actually cook those for? Just brown the flowers and stuff okay. around it. Yeah. So I suppose they're going to be a little bit crispy on the outside, Correct. and soft and delicious on the inside. Definitely. The next step is putting the uh, roto boards together on its own spoon. I'll get the coconut cream, the first okay. one to go in, and you throw it in, about a uh, cup full. About a cup, you say when? When. All right. A half a cup of chicken stock, a little bit of that. And then you throw in your garlic, uh, about a teaspoon. Salt and pepper. Just a pinch? Yeah. Good pinch of pepper. Now, I love black pepper, so we'll go a little bit like that. It smells beautiful already, eh? It's very rich too. That's how I like it. <laughs> so what's next? The next step is that we need to, while it's starting to simmer, yeah. you need to put your roll balls back in. Okay, so I just place them in? Yeah, place them in. Right here. Yeah, now, bread, this is all about the basting. So Five how many minutes. minutes does this usually take it for this step? Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Grab the herbs, uh, the spring onion and the coriander together. Okay. okay. And just uh, throw a handful of each in there. Rightio. Okay, now we turn it off. Rightio, so is that it? Yes, that's it. We're finished. You're ready. I think that's my calling to go and have a seat, huh? All right, then. All right. Now, too, it's always customary to me to match the dish that we're eating of the day with a little bit of tea. And I think green tea with ginger... Definitely. ..is going to go perfectly with that. Good. I'm going to take a little bit of this. Oh, it's very soft. You like wow. it? I did not expect it to taste like that at all. This is quite different. It's authentic. It's local. It's Fijian. Sometimes. I love my job so much that I don't think they could, I could do, ever do anything else. And this is one of those times. Recipes featured are available at tvnz.co.nz slash taste of a traveller. Hello. Very well, thank you. How are you? Check out Hello World's Deal of the Week to Fiji. Experience a slice of Fiji for yourself with Hello World. Five nights at the stunning Outrigger Fiji Beach Resort from $689 per person twin share. Contact Hello World on 0800 260 260 or visit tvnz.co.nz slash taste of a traveller.